Hey everyone, welcome to another lecture. We are starting a unit on sharks before we go to marine mammals and finish out the semester. So sharks are part of class chondrichthys, cartilaginous fishes. Y'all should have heard me say this before. So chondrichthys includes shark skates rays, so there's a skate, there's a skate, there's a ray, there's a ray, bunch of sharks. So they've inhabited the earth for 280 million years. They have 350 species of sharks, 320 species of rays, and they're found worldwide at all depths. They're almost always marine. So, some characteristics, they have cartilage instead of bone. That's where chondrichthys come from, chondrich, cartilage. They're lighter and more flexible. They have jaws and paired fins, unlike class agnatha. We didn't cover agnatha, but they've got your jaws and paired fins. So they have a streamlined body, a torpedo shape, also known as fusiform, if you remember back to the first six weeks. They have placoid scales, denticles. These are small tooth-like plates, kind of like sandpaper. We also covered that the first six weeks, not that any of y'all remember. They have counter shading, where they are dark on top and light on bottom. This helps them kind of camouflage. We also went over that during the first six weeks. So this is going to be very similar to other um, fish anatomy that we went over. So instead of an operculum, you're gonna have gill slits. You still have a lateral line, sometimes. You have ampullae of Lorenzini with your nares, your snout, your eye, you have a mouth, you have pectoral fins, your first dorsal fin, second dorsal fin. You have a caudal fin and an anal fin. And we'll get into shark gender anatomy in a minute. Okay, so internal anatomy. We're not really going to get into this because We'll maybe do this when we do our dogfish dissection, but until then. So respiration, they have five to seven gill slits. Like I said earlier, they don't have an operculum covering those gill slits. Water passes over the gills, oxygen diffuses into the blood, kind of like with your lungs, and carbon dioxide comes out. Some pump water through mouths, some take in water through spiracles. Others keep swimming. Those are your ram ventilators. So buoyancy. Sharks don't have a swim bladder like fish do. They store oil in a large liver and they have a heterocircle tail. So their tail is not symmetrical. The top is going to be bigger than the bottom. So it creates lift. Horizontal pectoral fins also provide lift, and they cannot swim in reverse like bony fish can. So senses. They have an excellent sense of smell. Their nostrils only for smell, not for breathing. They simply, they have simple internal ears to hear low frequency vibrations. So they also have electroperception, which is the ability to detect weak electrical currents. And they have ampullae of Lorenzini in the in skin pores to find prey or migration. We went over that during the first six weeks when we talked about lateral lines. Lateral line, it stretches from head to tail. Fluid filled sensory canals sensitive to vibrations in the water. Reproduction, so they have separate genders. 
they, you have males and females. They usually have internal fertilization, which is rare in fish. Males will have claspers to transfer their stuff to the females. Some sharks give birth to live young, um, which is viviparous, whereas some lay, lay, lay eggs called mermaid's purses, which you see right here or right there. Those are oviparous. And then some have eggs within them that hatch within them and then give birth to live young. Those are oviviparous. So feeding. They have a ventral mouth. Their teeth are specialized denticles, as you can see. They have six to 20 rows deep of teeth, easily lost and replaced, so they can have up to 50,000 teeth in a lifetime. They have hinged jaws, so upper jaw and lower jaw work independently and in opposition to each other. And you have different shapes of shark teeth depending on the species. Feeding. Many are predators. They eat fish, marine mammals, and they have speed. So some eat plankton like your whale sharks or your basking shark. And a whale shark is the largest fish. It's up to 60 feet long. They filter plankton with an open mouth. They are low. They, they are low on the food web so that they can get the most biomass at the least energy costing way. And some are scavengers. Shark attacks. These are rare-ish. The average of six per year worldwide. I think that's a little outdated now. We had, I think shark attacks are down this summer. But like last summer, there was just a crazy amount of shark attacks. And it's usually a mistake of humans for sills. So great whites are the most dangerous at up to 23 feet and 3,000 pounds. Other dangerous species are your mako sharks, your tiger sharks, and your hammerheads. I think bull sharks, which hang around um, the Gulf Coast around Galveston, can get pretty aggressive. So symbiosis, you have the remora or the sucker fish. This is a mutualistic symbiotic relationship with the shark. So it picks up scraps and feeds on external parasites. You can, though, have this swing into parasitism because the remora could ruin the skin and make it hard to swim if there are too many of them attached to the shark or ray. So human uses, food, um, there's shark fin soup, there's steaks, there's vitamin A in livers, there's also where you get your fish oils from, um, the skin is good for leather, they're often overfished, raised in skates, they have flattened bodies. They have broad wing-like pectoral fins. They glide or fly through the water, and both eyes are on top of their head. So they have a ventral mouth with teeth, but they don't really have teeth. They more just kind of mash their food with their jaw. Um, they, If you got bit by a ray, it wouldn't hurt. Largest feed on plankton. They're usually associated with ocean bottom and they're mostly not harmful. You have to kind of get up in its area and really make it not to like where it can't escape before it steams you. So is it a skate or is it a ray? Rays have no thorns along the midline of the back, kind of like a rose thorn. They have each pelvic fin only has one lobe. The tail is very slender and whip-like with a stinging spine midway along 
its length, and it's usually without a dorsal fin somewhere down here on the tail. When a dorsal fin occurs, it is near the base of the tail up here. The caudal fin is either reduced and continuous or absent. So mature males do not have something spines and they give live birth. So they are viviparous reproduction. So skates. They have most, most have an enlarged thorns along the midline of the back extending onto the tail. They have pelvic fins, two lobes. They have tail is relatively stocky without a stinging barb. And they usually have two small dorsal fins near the tip, right over here. The caudal fin is tiny when present. And mature males have enlarged spines near the eyes and pectoral wing tips. So they also lay eggs, so they are oviviparous. Okay, that is all for today. I will talk to you guys later in my next slideshow. Have a great day.